At your request, I have investigated the recent catastrophe of the Nice previously occupying the remote mountains of northern Kador. Learning of their plight has been a challenge, and there is much that remains unknown. My investigations unearth the name of a key figure, a sorceress named Vale Hollier, many times referred to only as the Betrayer. My best sources of information have been nice refugees, the majority of whom are presently living near Korsk. I have enclosed a separate report detailing my reconstruction of the catastrophe beyond items connected to this subject. Several selected interviews with the more informative of these individuals are transcribed below. Summary Alias the Betrayer The Ice Witch Frozen Queen of Halia Notes on Dates Acetating accurate dates amongst the nice is problematical. They mark time in relation to seasons and the periodic migrations between shared communal settlements. Migrations often occur every few decades, but each shard has its own traditions, and some are stationary, such as the Halir. Born 530 AR, Vale's birth date estimate derives from the backing into the period of the Fane of Nysor training her into sorcery. 545, and her likely age during this time, mid-teens. Other significant dates. 556, assumed tenuous control of the Halia tribe after conspiring in the death of its tribal elders. 565, eliminated the last of internal opposition. 574, accused by tribal elders of unprovoked attacks and raiding on neighboring shards. Packs of mutual defense formed. 578 to 595 destroys several neighboring shards, increasing her reputation for being bloodthirsty. 596 violence halted by alliance of tribes, but she retains her position of power. 605 collaborated in nice genocide, helping to annihilate their tribal culture. 606 speculated to have led attacks against northern Kadoran villages. 607. May have led attacks in Lael, Northern Signar, and the Bloodstone Marshes, where there has been a rise in mysterious depths matching her alleged modus operandi. Familial status, no indications of surviving siblings or other immediate living relatives. Training, educated in sorcery and the Arik alphabet among the fane of Nysor. Professor Pendrake published a compilation of notes on a breed of dragon spawn he termed incognitus, descriptions of which match those of certain eyewitness accounts of attacks across a broad region of Western Emmeran. The professor's associate, Linus Weaselbaum, allegedly has first-hand contact with these creatures. He also witnessed Neist he purported to show signs of dragon blight. After inquiring in the guise of feigned academic credentials, I received the following. My experiences with Selena Rayfill and her hunters was horrifying, but in retrospect I learned more than I appreciated at the time. Suffice it, with... Suffice it to say that I have with my own eyes seen Nice and Dragonspawn fighting in close proximity with each other and believe there is a connection to be had between them. Your inquiry recalled a conversation I'd almost forgotten overheard while the Rayfield hunters spoke amongst themselves. They spoke of a woman named Vale Hollier, someone they viewed with equal measures of hatred and wary respect. She had chased and hounded the religious sect of their people even after they fled to the north. The looks shared between Selena's people while discussing this woman told me that I was missing something significant in their exchange. Given our ignorance on nice religion, I had no way to deduce the subtext, but they seemed to feel some crisis was imminent. It was clear they were speaking of someone they considered a formidable enemy and against whom they strongly desired vengeance. You could try to contact the Rayfield tribe directly, but I warn they may prove evasive. Linus Weaselbaum, Associate Professor. I journeyed to Korsk to interview the nice refugees there. As Linus warned, they were not eager to speak to a human, but the mention of Vale Hollier provoked a strong reaction. The refugees evidenced a universal hatred of her. This loathing prompted them to speak with greater candor than might have been the case otherwise. 
Many refugees could recall little, and said no more than that she was a loathsome creature who had invited destruction. At length I found an old priest named Komir Melwin, allegedly involved with Halia's childhood training some six decades hence. I am now convinced that even as a child, there was something wrong with her, but we did not learn that until much later. Vale was a consummate liar. The feigned ignorance and sincerity took cool advantage of those who wished to befriend her. I think she bore deep hatred of us for reasons I will never understand. Perhaps she hates herself. Her potential blinded us in the priesthood. Our faith regards sorcery as the gift of Nysor, a belief I no longer hold. Vale had an unusual appetite for knowledge and a clear desire to refine her power. Once, I actually enjoyed teaching young sorcerers and delighted in seeing their budding awareness to their power. Vale put an end to that. Sorcery is an extension of will, usually manifesting as simple evocations of winter's cold. Learning more refined tasks can take decades. From the beginning, Vale displayed a subtlety beyond her years. We mistook this hunger for knowledge as something healthy. She feigned piety so well we asked her to consider joining the priesthood. <laughs> I will admit that she charmed me as well. I was there when she turned her back on the priesthood. She took delight in profaning Nysor to my face. My pain amused her. She used her power like a knife to carve weaker minds and flay them down to a sliver. Sorcery for her was not a communion with Nysor, but as a means of personal ascension. She perverted the skills we taught her to subjugate the Halia tribe. Even if the abomination had not come among us, Vale would have sought to destroy our people. I am sure of it. Ashard had lived in peace with the Hollier for decades until the rise of the Frozen Queen. We had given up the paradoxical sojourners of those shards further south. In a not unusual arrangement, one of my cousins married into the Hollier family, and from her I heard much of Vale's crimes. You may know how little weight we put into those who call themselves masters. We have no kings or chiefs. Elders we heed before in the youth, in a natural way. This did not content Vale, who would not wait decades to fulfill her ambitions. Soon after, she shamed herself before our priests. She returned to her tribe and there began to inflict terror upon her own kin in secret. Those who speak, those who spoke rumors of her suffered and repented or died. I saw my cousin's eyes darken with dread, and her speech become stammering whispers when she spoke of Vale to me. Soon she would speak no more of her mistress beyond offering praises, while her hands shook with fear. I cannot confirm the dread tales of Vale's atrocities to her kin, but I know the elders of Halia vanished in a single night. The tribe would not speak of them, but years later, a tracker of my tribe came across a single grave containing the frozen bodies of those who went missing. There was nothing to tie them to Vale, but we knew her to be the cause. The Hollier were too terrified to oppose her, and soon she turned her attentions on her neighbors. My shard did not last long after the blades of her shard. Few of us survive. Who remember those days. While the refugees were glad to speak of Vale's past, they proved reluctant to discuss the more recent events. When I asked of them about the reports of Nice exhibiting blighted symptoms spotted elsewhere, they grew silent and looked away. It was as if they feared to put into words what they had seen. I did in fact find a hunter belonging to the Rayfield band Weasabom mentioned. This individual had lost an arm, becoming crippled and thus unable to join the battle of his leaders. He led me north to the Shard Spires, there to show me the devastation of his people firsthand. 
As I looked on the charred and smoking ruins of nice villages, he held out his one good hand to encompass it all and said to me, This is the lasting legacy of Vale Halia. We followed the path of destruction, and I soon learned that it was far more extensive than I have ever anticipated. I returned to the Kedoran capital and plundered their military records, finding numerous buried reports of inexplicable attacks in both northern Kador and occupied Lael. Few of these accounts refer to Vale specifically. In investigating the Horkov massacre, I have concluded that this attack is connected to similar incidents in Kolostal, Rostovik, and Servigos, despite the distances between these communities. I have seen no reason to fault the response time of the Third Boulder Legion in these attacks, although they have been very reluctant to comply with our requests for their version of events. At Horkov, a female nice of considerable sorceress acumen led the pillagers, and the few surviving witnesses have related that dragonic monstrosities heeded her directions and moved where she dictated. I spoke to a young man who had hidden in the ruins of a house during the attack and who witnessed this sorceress conducting and coordinating the gathering of corpses to be stacked into bloody cauldrons from which fresh horrors emerged. This would explain the lack of bodies left for burial at several of the massacre sites. Our ability to stop the spread of rumors related to these attacks has become less effective as this enemy moves into more populated and heavily trafficked regions. It was a simple matter to obscure the horrors of Rostovich and Kolostal in particular as they were more isolated communities with fewer trade arrangements. I am concerned that should this force hit a major city or town, it could easily prompt widespread panic. The Dimitrovich Dorkin Grave Lord Colden, the Kratz. While I was initially skeptical of rumors of blighted nice fighting in proximity with organized groups of Dragonspawn, I think the conclusion is now inescapable. Exactly what this force represents and what its goals are remain a mystery. I found the movements and attacks of these raiders incoherent, but understanding this group's leaders may provide additional clues. What struck me immediately were the reports of these attacks are very reminiscent of what is left in the wake of Crixian raids. I feel no closer to a real answer and can only hope that further investigation will reveal the identities of other leaders of this armed force. Greetings dear viewer, this is Gavin Kyle. If you've liked this dossier on this particular subject and wish to see more from my classified files, then it would be in your best interest to like, comment, and most of all, subscribing to this channel. If you fail to do so, then the rest of my file shall remain under lock and key where no mortal eyes will see them. If you wish to support this channel in a more direct fashion, there is Patreon in the description as well as PayPal. You can also support the channel by purchasing the author's new book, New World, on sale on Amazon. Link is in the description below. Until next time, this has been Gavin Kyle. Thank you for enjoying my files, and until the next time.